So I got a story from a woman named Andrea, uh, originally from Colorado, now a resident of Uganda. How she got there is a pretty uh, crazy miracle. She went there as a student for class credit to learn how to do microfinancing. And while she was there, she found an orphanage where the children were being abused and neglected really badly. Over the course of those two months, um, witnessing the day-to-day -day life of the kids, um, the abuse they faced, I fell in love with them. You know, they became um, so much more than just, you know, needy kids that you would see on commercials or, you know, they became people and they're kids and they have personalities and smiles and beautiful faces. I knew that God had a bigger plan for them and that they shouldn't be trapped in the situation of neglect and abuse. And her heart broke and she called her dad and said, I'm not coming home. Her dad said, you get on a plane right now. She said, no, if I don't do something, who will? So she stuck around, pestered the Ugandan government long enough until they shut down that orphanage. And then they handed 40 children to her care. Andrea didn't know what she was doing, but she did something. And now there's an orphanage in Iganga, Uganda called Musana that houses over 120 children. And Andrea is the head of this orphanage. On September 16th, 2008, we actually got to move the first 40 kids from that other orphanage. And I remember bringing the kids to Musana and they lined up and we said go and they all ran to their name tags and jumped in their beds and like had the biggest smiles on their faces. Not one of them had ever slept in a bed before. And that night I remember going around and giving every single one of them like a kiss on the forehead and a hug and saying like you're home now, you're safe. Um, I love you, God loves you. And it was the best, by far the best moment of my life and the moment where I knew that God had such big plans for these kids and that these kids were going to be the future leaders of Uganda and the future leaders of this world. I woke up this morning, saw a world full of trouble. Now I thought, how do we ever get so far down? And how's it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven. I thought, God, why don't you do something? Everybody is capable of making a difference, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what your job is, no matter what situation you're in. Every single person is capable of doing something and making the world a better place. So I shook my fist in heaven. I said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I created you. Uh-oh. Come on, say if not us, then who? If not me and you right now? Well, it's time for us to do something. Yes, it is. If not now, then when will we see an end of this pain? It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. Somebody say yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so tired of talking about how we are God's hands and feet when it's easier to say than to be. We, we live like angels of apathy who tell ourselves it's all right. Somebody else will do something. In Uganda, they say that there's 2.5 million orphans. And an orphan is defined by a child that's lost their father. So many of the kids at Musana actually do have mothers, but they don't have the resources, the skills to be able to take care of them. And so we want to start a new project to empower mothers to take care of their children. to do something Well, if not now, then when will we see an end of all this pain? Well, it's not enough to do nothing. It's
So many people always say like, oh, I feel so bad for those children. I feel so bad for these people in Uganda or in Africa. And honestly, like I walk around the community of Iganga and I admire the people so much. The joy, the spirit, the community, the love between them. And that's what it's all about. It's time for us to do something.